Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Voices Randomish. I'm your host, Elder J. Alexander, and tonight I'm going to talk about gun violence and how it may be impacting corporate hiring efforts. For those of you who are new to the channel, Voices Randomish is the channel that focuses on current news events, pop culture, fashion, and Voices Randomish mission is to engage in dialogue, to enlighten, inspire, and uplift you. So let's get started. Like I said tonight, what I really wanted to focus on was gun violence, specifically around the AR-15 assault rifle, right? So this is this is how the conversation really evolved and how I started to think about why I wanted to talk about this. Remember, it's not any an opinion or anything like this. It's really just looking objectively, critically thinking about all the data and all of the images and all the messages that are coming at me lately and all of us and kind of putting it together in a way that we can synthesize the information, summarize and kind of make some meaning of what's going on, right? So here's the issue. Most people are struggling just like I am as a grandparent, I'm struggling with the notion that kids are no longer safe in schools. It's nothing like when I grew up in school where you had neighborhoods, we band together. If there was somebody that didn't like somebody, we sort of worked it out. And now everything seems to be resolved or any type of conflict that people are engaging in, they seem to want to use guns as a way to resolve it, right? And what that's leaving is us sort of with a bad taste in our mouth, especially when you think about employers who want you to come back into the brick and mortar settings in order to complete work that for the last few years we've been in our homes or working hybrid. And for the most part in your home, you do feel safe. So isn't it, don't you think that after all, it is hard to think about sending people's, you know, sending their children out to school each day and to think about work when you're worried about your family and your safety you know, for a lot of people that live in bigger cities that are taking mass transit for a while in New York subways, possibly on L trains and any other form of mass transit buses or what have you, there were people being attacked and assaulted for various different reasons, whether they were hatred crimes, race related or what have you. It's still fearful out there because people are carrying around a lot of pain and hurt. You never know what the trigger is going to be and you don't want to be in the line of fire. Recently, literally has been the line of fire. The controversy, the controversy is around these particular type weapons that are so-called AR-15 weapons, which the legislation is seeking to ban under the umbrella of targeting these rifles uh, that, that even though they are not used in most crimes, general crimes, they're being targeted. So according to the 2019 FBI Uniform Crime Report, from 2015 to 2019, knives, blunt objects, and personal objects, personal weapons, such as your fist and feet, those exceeded rifles. Uh, when, when you looked at all the types of causes of death every year, semi-automatic weapons, uh, such as pistols, the firearm of choice for conceal and carry licenses have recently garnered attention. They said from the, the uh, pro-gun people, are. this is what I'm talking about when I say they. They said that semi-automatic pistols, the firearm of choice for conceal and ferry licenses have recently garnered attention from anti-gun lawmakers. They are now included under the assault weapon umbrella legislation. And the practice is becoming more and more commonplace to label weapons assault weapons in order to conceal the true intention of banning all privately owned firearms. Okay, so that's what the claim is that the full motive is, is that banning all semi-automatic weapons, uh, firearms is now the goal of the anti-gun lobby. And they know that the common criminal, they said in this article, the pro-gun lobby has said that the common criminal is not going to be affected by the bans and the legislation labeling every semi-automatic sem firearm as an assault weapon is going to play on the emotional response of the public who may not be educated on how firearms work and how to use them every day, you know, and still be within the law, right? And the law abiding citizens that are trying to defend themselves, the pro-gun advocates are saying that this legislation is basically being something that's put in place to curb the, be the purchase of semi-automatic firearms by anybody in the United States. It's really just basically to shut down 
some of your access to being able to hunt small game control target shooting competition and personal incentive that's that's the legitimate reasons for using and if we label more and more weapons as assault weapons then we might run into an issue where people won't have access to resources needed for the legitimate purposes of hunting small game control target shooting competition and personal defense all right so what's the argument here okay let, let me just go to the next okay here's the argument i pulled these statistics from the gun gun violence archive that lists the total number of gun violence deaths all causes 11,665 of which murder homicide unintentional or whether it was done intentionally 4,999 suicide get this suicide 6,666 so 6666 six, six suicide total number of in injuries 8,957 but this is where it gets dicey between January 1st and I believe April the 10th, we've had 147 mass shootings. Of those mass shootings, 14 murders. The number of children, zero to 11, there was one killed, 73 injured. Uh, let's see, yeah, 73 out of, yeah, this, this is a lot. Teens, 407 killed, 980 injured. And it just gets uglier and uglier. So you, I embedded the link down at the bottom of this where you can go out to the gun violence archive and .org and it has all the information. All right, so moving right along. Other things we need to think about. So in April 22nd of 2022, Aria Bendix wrote an article that describes guns and, and documents guns as being a leading cause of death among children and teens in 2020 killing more people ages 1 to 19 in the U.S. than vehicle crashes, drugs, and overdoses of cancer. In Aria's article, she cites that more than 4,300 people died of firearm-related injuries in, 2020, in that year, a 29% increase from 2019. So in 2020, 4,300 people died of firearm-related injuries, which was, again, a 29% increase over 2019. And the letter that that supports that is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, where they analyzed decades of mortality from disease control. And they said in the last 40 years and almost certainly before that, this is the first time in firearm that firearm injuries have suppressed motor vehicle crashes among kids. Think about that. In 40 years, that firearm injuries have surpassed motor vehicle crashes among kids. And you think about the frequency of the number of children that are riding in a car and yet in the 40, last 40 years. And we're at 2023. That's sad. 40 years, the last 40 years. Wow. Shame. Moving right along. Let's, let's think about the costs. Here's some statistics. I looked up just the cost of gun violence and it's 557 billion annually comparable to 20% 2.6% of GDP and GDP or gross domestic product is used to estimate the size of the US economy and it's calculated as the value of all goods and services produced in the US Harvard medical researchers found that gun violence has cost the US more than 557 billion annually or 2.6% and that was as of September, wow, 27 to 2022. Think about 2.6% of, of gross domestic product or all the value of all the goods and services and that gun violence is costing those that kind of money in the U.S. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, I, I looked at, did the U.S. lead the world in mass shootings? The worst incidents have been in South Asia, Europe, and Africa. But that being said, the U.S. has a, gun homicide rate that is 25 times higher than in other countries with high gun with higher incomes. Sometimes groups that said like the Taliban or ISIS are behind mass shooters and other time people are just seeking out twisted acts of individual revenge in twisted ways. So, and here's a fun fact for you, the term mass shooting that only emerged in the post-World War II era. So think about that, World War II and where we are now with a new term along with 
collateral damage to describe the people who are killed. Employer losses in addition to general health care related costs that employers cover for things like health insurance, disability, and work comp. Employers also note that the that there's a, a cost of victims because again, some of those people never ever are able to work again. And oftentimes those people are not easily able to be replaced. You think about somebody who's been working here for 30, 20, 30 years. That's that's knowledge and experience you can't really replace. And so it's talking about labor statistics that show that employer experienced 534.9 million a year in direct costs related to gun violence. And this is what I'm saying is starting to impact hiring and retention because if if I'm worried about my safety, I'm not going to be as productive. I'm, my attendance may go, may get worse because I'm absent because there may be days when I panic about leaving the house or what have you, right? And I'm not speaking for me personally, but I'm just talking about some of the the, the stories that I've heard and some of the the testimonials that people are talking about is the reasons why they're seeking to work from home and or homeschool their children, right? Because just safety is at the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once you know you exist, you're trying to be safe. And if you can't be safe, nothing else matters. I mean, the hell with anything else. You ain't going to try to die to get a check. So that's how the thing. can, you know, we look at, at, at gun safety laws and figure it out. Although there have been some massive wins, you know, with gun control, spending for from the right side far outweighing gun control you know pro-gun control like if you look the people who want to have guns in place the money that they're spending is far outweighing the people that said you need to increase the faith safety measure measures and so throughout the 22 session state lawmakers and governors have enacted at least 51 gun safety laws but then then they but they also block 95 percent of the gun lobby's agenda including hundreds of attempts by the gun lobby to weaken gun laws. So by on um, give with one hand and on the other hand. So it's really out of balance. Again, as you can see by this chart, there's more money spent spent to protect gun rights versus controlling the guns, uh the, the, the use of guns, right? And I get it. I get it on both sides. And this is really just for information for you. So here's that AR-15 again saying that this this is not an assault rifle, saying that this is something that people can use for other reasons, that it's the person who misuses it and not the gun itself that's doing the bad things. Well, my thing is, is that this is impacting the community. It's impacting us to be able to heal from trauma because if you think about it in the United States, we've only had, we've had 145 shootings and there's only been 124 days in the year. That's more than a shooting per day. And it's not one or two people accidentally letting a gun go off is where someone is deliberately strapped up and they have a motive. This last one with a 28 year old going into a school and then the people going into the, the person going into the bank. These are disgruntled people. Something is happening. Either a disgruntled student who comes back to exact revenge and goodness knows why you will wait so long to come back and then you would take it out on innocent little children aren't there that tells you that there's a mental health crisis. But then you have people that are disgruntled employees like that Walmart employee a few weeks ago and now the Louisville, Kentucky employee at the bank that people are just mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore. And I still take it back to not having enough empathy and compassion in the workplace for what people have to face when they need to leave their homes in order to go make a living. We have to do something to support mental health well-being and invest in our communities to promote that resilience and well-being and health being and I, you stripped all the social programs out of the city so what is the people supposed to do to release stress and what are children supposed to do when they get off this there's nothing for them to do if we're not supporting healthy norms about what it means to be masculine and what it means to that it's okay to not be a, a, a an aggressive person you know we're promoting this violence in this country and it's and it's 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 sad Red Fox, I'll never forget. One time I was listening to him. He's hilarious. He was like, the cost of living is going up and the chance of living is going down. I ain't that the truth, Ruth. And that's the line from Do the Right Thing right there that Ossie Davis says. Do the truth, speak the truth, Ruth, or ain't that the truth, Ruth. So as I look at these people who were who killed, all of these beautiful children who were mowed down yeah. and, and adults that recently in that bank shooting and the students who were you know, couldn't even enjoy their senior skip out day over the Easter holiday weekend. This? Come on, what is and then you just don't want to forget the faces of anybody out there that's that's gone too soon, and all of these people are gone too soon. 
But by the, by the same oh, token, okay. something has to be done because recently, this is a, the news article. I was standing in my living room and I couldn't believe that he is a four-year-old that had access to a gun. So while some guns may need to be outlawed, the biggest thing is, is that we have to practice gun safety. If you're going to have a gun to reduce the imminent risk of, of somebody being lethally hurt, including yourself, we have to have sensible gun laws because we have to have a practice a culture of safety. And people have to find another way to deal with conflict as opposed to picking up a gun. So that has to be the last thing. So the sensible gun laws are going to reduce easy access to dangerous weapons. And we can already see that there is easy access because he's a four-year-old with a gun pointing it at their neighbor. You ask yourself, how did a four-year-old get a gun? And how did a six-year-old get a gun to go to school and shoot their teacher? And by the way, that teacher is now suing uh, the school system, I believe, and the parent and the mother is being arrested and held accountable. And I, she's going to turn herself in later this week. But the biggest thing is reducing the firearm access to youth and individuals who are at risk of harming themselves or others. That's the best thing you can do. I mean, there's all kind of gun locks. Then you can put the gun in type of some type of gun safe and then lock it behind a door and put it up somewhere in another box and lock it. So there's no reason why a four-year-old or anybody who is not legally authorized to carry a gun should have oh, access. God. All right. So I want to know what you think about this video. Hey, the thing about it is we got to go into some comprehensive solutions that involve supporting one another, community planning, some comprehensive community safety plans centered around prevention and intervention. If you see something, say something, please do something right. Practice compassion and empathy. Understand the trauma that someone has gone through and know the connection to some services or point that person in the direction to services that they might be able to use. Some things that we could do is become more culturally competent about what we're seeing about others and about how we might be triggered and what might trigger others, right? How we can be emotionally and socially supported and what other mental support systems might be at our disposal to help us and our families address the impact of you know, all the social issues that are preventing us from being our best, best self. And then also we can re read more about how we can support gun violence research right through the CDC, the, the Centers for Disease, Disease Control and Prevention. There are resources out there that we can use to study the issue and provide some science-based guidance. Everything doesn't have to be about people's opinions and their attitudes and all that. We look at our health system and established health system where Violence prevention is the health system's responsibility, and it's a, a, a national imperative. And then finally, learn more about how we can be innovative and create, increase the way that we connect with one another and research and practice behaviors that help us to heal mentally and not have so much stigma around mental health so that people are picking up guns and finding that that's the only way out. So I want to thank you for joining me tonight. I hope this video wasn't too long. Sorry if some things jumped around, but I wanted to make sure that I got everything in. I'm not neither for or against. I think that each person should look at their own family situation and determine what works for them. If you need to have a gun because of where you live, then make sure that you're taking all the precautions and doing the proper registrations and background and all the things that you're supposed to do so that you're legally registered. If for some reason you don't want to have a gun in your house, then that's your choice. But for those people who do, you have a responsibility not only to yourself, but your family in your community to ensure that you are safe, first of all, and that you're protecting others by preparing the, by putting the things where they're supposed to be, right? Gun locks, gun safety, reading up on it and so on and so forth. So thanks again for joining tonight. If you like this broadcast or if you want to know more, I'd love it if you put a comment down at the bottom of the screen, go on and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next week. Who gosh only knows. I'll probably do some fashion stuff if we don't go to hell in a hand basket before then. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and take care. Remember, subscribe because Voice is Randomish. We're the only channel that wants to know. I personally want to know what's your frequency. Have a good night. Bye, y'all.